Hello. In this video, uh, we'll look at image trace as a way to turn a JPEG into a vector image. We'll e examine the advanced options, uh, specifically removing white, adjusting levels, uh, remembering to expand to uh, finalize the image, and then ungrouping and regrouping uh, if necessary. And I'll go rather quickly through this and uh, in an effort that you can see image trace work a couple of different ways. Uh, some you'll be will make more sense to you and others are, are more advanced. And if you if you have any trouble or questions you can review the video. I'm gonna go place the first JPEG in here. I'll go to place. Alright, let's start here. So I'll place this. You'll remember tracing this in an earlier lesson and replacing the text with our own text as we used uh, type on a path to do that. Uh, and if you remember, we brought this image into Photoshop first and removed the radar. So, and then we traced it by hand. Let's look at image trace to do the same thing. So you'll notice I immediately after placing it in here, I have the option to uh, image trace. I'm going to click image trace. And you may or may have noticed it, but it's already vectorized it. And the, the options, uh, not so much adjusting for this image, but you'll see in future images, this becomes important. So I'll show you here. You want to click on the image trace panel and then the advanced arrow. And this will open up a number of options where you can choose how light or how dark or how many lines are involved in the image trace. So if I bring the paths down, you might be able to see the adjustment on this image. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to uh, click ignore white. And then the last step that is often forgot is the expand step. Just like that, I'll close image trace. Just like that, we've turned this into a vector. Now, what if we wanted to get rid of the letter, the letters above the headdress because we wanted to put our own? Well, this is image traced, and it's all vector shapes now, but it's grouped. So we would just need to ungroup it and select what we want to delete and then regroup it. So I'll just click the entire thing with my selection tool, go to Object, Ungroup, and now you can see these pieces are separate, and I can delete them. And be careful because those are separated too. And I'll just go to object and regroup them and then we can go ahead and we could put our name along the headdress. Okay. Let's keep going. I'll lock that one and turn it off. I'll go to file place. See what the next one I have here is. This is another logo. Uh, you'll notice as soon as I bring it in, I have the option to image trace it. it. says it's a large image. It may proceed slowly. No problem, but it went pretty quickly. Uh, go to the uh, image trace uh, panel, and if the advanced options aren't open, I'll open those up. I'll hit ignore white. And then I can adjust paths, and again, these are pretty straight lines. No real problem looks really good. Uh, I'll hit expand and here you know this has been vectorized and I can resize it by holding the shift on the corner you know pretty quickly and very nicely done. These are those have been per two pretty simple images so I'll make a new layer. I'll turn the eyeball that one off and I'll add another one file. Place let's see. It's like that. All right. <clears throat> A little different, but for the most part, a pretty simple image. I'll click Image Trace. It says it's going to go slowly, but when we're tracing in black and white, it goes pretty quickly. And, you know, we can make adjustments, but again, this is you're not going to see much because it's already traced it pretty good. I'll hit Ignore White. Okay. And Expand. Don't forget to Expand. Now, I would always recommend when you're tracing a logo that has text that you want to add the text uh, separately because tracing text 
particularly as we export as a JPEG and then maybe bring it into the, the vinyl cutter, it will it'll get distorted to a point where you'll notice it, whereas a logo wouldn't so much. So for this one, I'd go to Object, Ungroup, and I would just highlight the text and get rid of it and then regroup this. Or, you know, maybe you just want to, whoops. You just want a particular piece of the logo. You can move it around, but I'm going to regroup this. And then I would look for the Yamaha text and I would type Yamaha separately and you will get a, a much better result by uh, adding the text on its own. So I'll turn that off. Let's look at a couple more images. So I have this one I want to take a look at. I'm going to open this in Photoshop first. I'm going to do that with the next two and you'll see why here in a sec. But this is this will be a pretty simple image too. Now if you take a look at this in Photoshop this Indian here, you can see that, you know, this is a, you know, it's a low resolution image. All I'm going to do, because this will be easier here, will be I'm just going to get my eyedropper and my brush tool, and I'm just going to paint out the text in here, and then maybe we could replace it with and I'll go to File save as I'll just call it uh, my uh, save as I'll call it my Raider long it's kind of long in shape okay so a quick edit in Photoshop uh, bring it into Illustrator file place it and there's my Raider long you notice I've been doing one color here, uh, one color. So image trace does a really nice job. Now here I'll I'll make some adjustments. You'll be able to see them. So if I bring the paths up, you'll notice it does make some changes. And I find paths are generally pretty good. Just pulled off of 100%, so around 95%. Corners you can make those adjustments too. You know, I'm not seeing a whole lot of change here. Noise will, you know, that'll make it darker. But this is a pretty simple image. I'm going to click Ignore White. And, you know, I haven't done this on the other ones, but I'll hit Expand. And if I wanted to, I could go to File, Export, as you know. Export it as My Raider Vector. I'll put that, uh, or My Raider Traced, and I'll export it as a JPEG. Okay, so the last one uh, I want to show you is is this one. Now this is for education purposes. We're learning how to use this. So, but here are a number of these are like motorcycle logos that I got from the web. Okay, so these are in, this is in Photoshop now, and I'm just going to choose one. So I'm going to use the crop tool and isolate this one here. Okay, and remember, you know, when using text for decals or shirts, you want to add your own text, really. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this. You don't want to trace text, really, ever. Text or type you want to add on its own um, and for a much better clarity resolution. I'm going to get rid of that because I just want this. Uh, and... Uh, and maybe you can see there's some letters in there. Maybe I'll just zap those out with the white paintbrush also. Okay. And this skull has a 13 on it, so I'll just save it as um, my skull 13. Okay. All right. So you can see it's, a, uh, it's an image that is very low resolution. doesn't take long to see that when we zoom in on it. Okay. So... I'll pull up Illustrator on this last one. I'll make a new layer, and I will um, turn this guy off. And let's take a look at this one. Oh. It's not giving me my file place for some reason. There we go, file place. And remember, this was my skull 13. I'll place this. 
and I'll go to image trace and you can see that it did a fairly good job tracing it but this is where you're gonna see um, on a detail graphic like this this is where you're gonna see now would this print good as a vinyl decal probably not would it print well on a t-shirt definitely we can print much finer detail with ink than we can cut with a vinyl cutter but you know check this out I'll take a look at it now and I'll increase the paths I'll increase the corners I can adjust the noise. And when I adjust, check, you know, look at the difference. When I bring the noise down, I get a lot more detail. I'm going to ignore the white. I'm going to hit expand. Don't forget hit ex to get a hit expand to, uh, to finalize it. You know, I can hold shift from a corner, make it larger. So we looked at image trace to turn JPEGs into vectors. We edited some in Photoshop prior, and then others we ungrouped and edited after we've traced them. Uh, we looked at the trace panel, uh, removing white on all of the images we trace and adjusting some of the levels. For some graphics with more detail, those advanced options and adjustments, particularly noise and paths, will have a, a greater impact. And, you know, remembering to hit the expand at the top in the, at the very end. Grouping and ungrouping is sometimes necessary, and when we are using these for decals, we would export them as a JPEG. For screen printing, we could leave them, we would leave them as a vector image, uh, as an Illustrator file and a PDF. So there's image trace uh, as a, another means to recreate low-resolution uh, images into high-resolution vectors.